You fought the rest. Now try the best. I was tagged in his posts. Thank you for tagging me. But it says biggest game of the year contenders 2024. There is five games listed. Astrobot with 94%. That's referring to the Metacritic score. Uh, Final Fantasy uh, Rebirth. Tekken 8, Stellar Blade, and Black Myth Wukong. Now, these are some really amazing games, but I think one of these games uh, does not deserve to be here. And that game, in my opinion, is Tekken 8. Um, of course, everyone wants to see their game in talks for Game of the Year, and uh, for Tekken 8 to be featured here is something we should be uh, proud of, celebrate. But in my opinion, I feel like the developers haven't earned it. Um, when you look at these other games, you can see they had a profound impact on the gaming industry, a positive one. Astrobots, I, I don't know too much about that game, but I know it's just trying to offer a genuine experience. Every time I see a clip of it on Twitter, it's just the most wholesome thing you can ever imagine. And it just seems like it's just trying to offer a fun experience. And I think that's what gaming is supposed to be. It's supposed to be just a fun experience and uh, something you enjoy. And Astrobot is delivering that. And uh, it seems like the people who play that game, they're getting exactly what they want. No strings attached. That's something you also got to mention is the strings attached when you're talking about Tekken 8 right but Final Fantasy this is also a really great franchise it's a legendary franchise but currently the franchise is hitting some hurdles there it's not selling as many copies Square Enix is considering some of the games a failure a flop uh, some of the games are not even spoken about the numbers for that game is tanking hard but even though the sales is tanking does that still mean it's not a contender for game of the year I don't know there's another game on this list that has kind of low sales but everyone loves it that game is stellar blade stellar blade is a game that you know when you look on twitter if you simply type up stellar blade you'll see the most viewed videos with like just tons of people celebrating it but the game in reality has the low sales and also too a lot of people take this game and use this game as an example for what other games should be um, it's not afraid to express its characters in ways that it want it's not afraid to uh you know um really go heavy on the sex appeal and, and try to sell their game through that but also underneath that you have a really good game the people who play stellar blade will tell you it's not just all about you know um you know sex appeal the gameplay of that game really shines through and it's kind of like sad in a way where the only thing people talk about is the sex appeal of that game meanwhile the gameplay is like fantastic There's another game on here that's all about the spectacle all about the gameplay all about the you know being immersed in the environment is black myth wukong black myth wukong is my personal game of the year i think this does everything right and few things wrong this game offers just a nice single player experience no crazy monetization they are working on a massive uh, like DLC expansion kind of like what Elden Ring did but they're in no way trying to like just get over on the player they're, they're just trying to deliver the best gameplay experience possible it comes from a small team in China the majority of the player base is from China and of course a lot of people make fun of that but in my opinion I really don't see anything wrong with that but I think Black Myth Wukong with everything that was able to accomplish I think that's a good example of video games like you could take that game to other video games and say this is how you should be and i think game of the year should represent that it should show the best that gaming has to offer and there's other games that i think fit that uh mode as well they're not on this list but you could talk about boulder gates 3 and all the all the things that game was uh able to accomplish the record breaking sales the way it gripped the uh, player base when it first released that game did amazing right you can also talk about some failures as well hell divers 2 is what i'm referring to but it was massive on launch but what they did after launch and how sony got greedy uh, it kind of bit them and they took a huge loss and the game kind of ceased to be talked about a lot of people still play it but it's not really uh mentioned and referred to as it once was and that was a game that could have been game of the year but it fell off so hard now when you talk about fall off this is where we talk about tekken 8 right tekken 8 had one job that job was continue. Tekken 7 did all the hard work of resurrecting this franchise. And that game had one of the most electric tournament um, environments for a fighting game. It was also one of the most profitable fighting games ever to exist as well, with very few monetization practices. Yes, you could talk about how egregious the pay to win DLC was, but that was pretty much it. They had an amazing customization. The story was lacking, but that's something that uh, Harada explained 
explained in the past how they were under so many pressures and so many restrictions and that was kind of because of Tech Attack Terminator 2. They wasted so much money in Tech Attack Terminator 2. They were given a very limited budget, which is where the narrator comes in, which is where all the images, uh, the, the slideshow images for the story comes in, right? They were working with the bare minimum for that game. And even with all of those, those hurdles, they were still able to overcome and deliver an incredible game. It, it may not be better than Tekken 3 or Tekken 5 in terms of gameplay, but it did an incredible job of resurrecting the franchise. And all that Tekken 8 had to do was like, you know how when you die in a video game and you have to press start to continue? That's all Tekken 8 had to do was continue what Tekken 7 did. And so far, they are doing a horrible job of that. Um, I just learned quite recently that Frame Whisper, which was a content creator that I like a lot, Frame Whisper kind of quit Tekken 8 because of all of the shenanigans it's doing. This game is more focused on selling you stuff, whether it be t-shirts, shoes, a watch, alcohol. Also, you could talk about all of the in-game monetization from a battle pass, a store, stuff that they held from the reviewers, and then they used those review scores to sell us a game. And then once we bought the game, then they turned on all of the egregious monetization. This is something that should not be rewarded. This is something that a game of the year does not do. When you look at these five games, only one of them has a in-game shop. Only one of them has a battle pass. Only one of them went so crazy and tried to take down the modding community. All of those things is what Tekken 8 tried to do. And in my opinion, I don't even think this game deserves fighting game of the year. This is not something to be proud of what this game is currently doing. I think you should give fighting game of the year to Crash Out. That is a game made by one person and that person put their heart and their soul into that game. And uh, even though it's Roblox, it's still like, you know, a incredible fighting game and we're gonna watch that thing flourish, right? That game has so much more passion behind it than this milking campaign that Tekken 8 is on. You literally have content creators quitting and going to play the rival game, Street Fighter 6. No way at all should this game be considered for game of the year. It has so much stuff they need to figure out and instead of figuring that stuff out, they're only focusing on monetization. And I know a lot of people say, who cares about monetization? Who cares? Just don't buy it. But the thing is, we have to focus on it. The developers have shown us they're able to focus on one thing. And right now that one thing is the store. We want them to stop that and focus on fixing the actual game. I did a poll on this channel where I was asking you guys, what do you want to see from Tekken? And a lot of you guys were talking about the balancing. A lot of you guys were talking about, you know, the actual game itself, the gameplay. And the developers are just completely la 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 ignoring it. With all of these games on this list, Tekken 8 is the one, the only one that has a very unbalanced borderline frustrating, obnoxious gameplay environment. And maybe I am going too hard on the game. Maybe I am too locked in to really see what the game is truly offering. But I feel like this game just has not earned its uh, place to be considered game of the year. And uh, I don't even think it should be considered fighting game of the year. I think Tekken 8 has a lot of potential and right now they're currently squandering it. And they should not be rewarded with all of their bad practices with any type of praise whatsoever. And that's just my personal opinion. I think the developers of this game are very smart, very talented, but they choose to use our love, our passion uh, against us. And they try to, you know, just feed us a bunch of garbage, a bunch of lies. They they say they want to sell us all this stuff so they could reinvest it back into the game. If they were really being genuine with saying that, they would have never hid the store. You know, what's the secrecy about? If, if that's really what their intentions was, they would have told that to the game and reviewers. How are you going to tell that to the, the, the players two months after they buy it? When you talk about, when I seen this post and I seen Tekken 8 was listed as one of the game of the years, I just completely disagree with this with every fiber of my body. I like Tekken a lot. This is a franchise that I love to play, but currently they are not doing anything at all to be considered uh, a role model uh, for what the gaming industry has to offer. In my opinion, I think they're a excellent showcase of what not to do. All of the battle passes, all of the shops, all of the ignoring players concerns, content creators dropping like flies. It's just not what you want to see. And this is not something that any game, any game should be replicating. But I just want to talk about this. Tekken 8, Best game of the year.